<laughs> Welcome to the Retro Reload. I am your host, Jeremy. And today we have another action packed show. With me, I got two handsome men. So, unfortunately, Tyler's not here, so that takes away one. Hey guys, I am Dash B. The fabulous. And it's Kyle here. So Super today, fabulous. Don't undersell yourself, Chris. Okay. Kyle, Kyle, my friend, like, what what happened to the, did the pizza parlor close down? It's temporarily shut down. I had pizza, like, five times in a row. Okay. <laughs> We're out of pizza. You know what you should have done? This would have been a hilarious Easter egg for folks that watch the show. You should have put, like, a, like, a, 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 what do they call it there, the health, the health industry or whatever, uh, like, grade, grade uh, F uh, or something. Uh, all right. gonna, I'll, I'll replace the picture back there with a uh, health rating for next week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're currently undergoing so, renovations for uh, for health uh, inspection. All right, so let's focus today. So today we're going to focus a little bit on CD, uh, the CD. Uh, we're going to have some pickups and some news. But first, with the CD, uh, the current Indiegogo is not quite there. They have 12 more days, and they're almost at 24000 Yes, fifty percent. And Metal Jesus Rocks recently had a review. He had an early copy of the system, so check that out. We shared it in our Facebook and Twitter already. That's pretty much it right now. But so yeah, help the guys out, guys. Yeah, Metal Jesus so, did a pretty a pretty thorough. Uh, you know, he put it through. Minutes, so he did pretty. pretty yeah, he played some DOS games on it. Played some games from the different uh, different consoles. I don't think he did retro games on it yet. Um, but yeah, uh, that's what the emulators, yeah, like that. Um, yeah, but, but you know, it was it was a pretty thorough uh, review. Yeah, Otherwise, gives this kind of take on it. Like the biggest issue I saw was DOS having sound issues, but I guess that's an own issue. Like it's really hard to emulate those things. Yeah, DOS box in general is very. The games from the DOS era were very tricky in the way that they handled sound, and um, I'm sure with a lot of these games, it's probably just having the right whispering the right magic into your auto exec bat. Remember the, that, folks, the auto exec bat. Running Mem Maker and all that stuff to get things get things just right. For those so, of us who uh, have no clue what you're talking about, Chris, not that that's me, but uh, could you explain right. that a little more? So the, the way that it used to work, without getting super technical, um, you didn't back in the old days in the DOS days, like literally, you just had this command prompt and you would type in the name of the game. You'd have to you know, manually go into the directory. There wasn't all these like visual things that you could like point and click your way through. You could just like double click an icon and play the game. And so um, right now, like pretty much for the last decade and a half, like every game that you've wanted to play, uh, pretty much, you know, you double click an icon on your desktop, Windows handles, making sure that there's enough memory and that things get moved aside for the game to play. Um, and it started out a bit rocky, but pretty much now things just tend to work uh, in Windows. Uh, you download a game on Steam, a few minutes later you're playing it. Uh, that wasn't always the case. It used to be that there were these configuration files and you had to like know where the files were and you had to open them up in a text editor. And it, again, this wasn't point and click, so you'd have to know the command to open the text editor, know all the shortcut keys to navigate around in the text editor, make changes, save it. A lot of times there were configuration files for the game as well as configuration files oh, for your God. system. And if they didn't, yeah, remember this, Jeremy? If they didn't match exactly, right? Like, so, so you'd have to have this file called auto exec bat, which ran when your computer booted. And that would have to say, like, oh, my sound blaster is, and then you have a whole bunch of hardware stuff in there. There'd be like an, uh, you know, an address, there'd be an IRQ, there'd be all this other yeah, stuff. Screw with it all up again. Right. And you have to put it in there. And I remember, like, I used to have like pieces of paper, like, I'd write down, like, it's 220 and then 80. And then, <laughs> yeah. And then I'd go into, like, this, you know, I'd go into this like arrow key and enter button driven menu system in the game if you were lucky. And then you'd be like, oh, I have a, wait a minute, do I have a Sound Blaster Pro or do I have a Sound Blaster regular or do I? I don't know this one's at all. Is it 16 bit? Is it 8 bit? Like, I don't, you know. But uh, all I remember is HMI module Alpha Hamana on approach to Space Ocean Mercury. <laughs> like, that was, that was like the, you know. That was like the the sound test that they would play, like repeated mm. and everything. Oh, okay, so, gotcha. But uh, and it was yeah, always like, young. yeah. <laughs> so it was well, really challenging. So so it was almost a game in itself. It was kind of like a hacking game, trying to figure out how to get your computer. 
to the point where you can actually play the damn game. <laughs> Half an hour later. Oh that yeah, so like the, that. The built-in security and all that. Yeah. And, oh yeah, you didn't even have the internet to tell you how to do it, or YouTube to tell you how to do it either. <laughs> oh yeah, that was the right. thing, right? Like if you're googling it, like like right now, like I mean, there's people who are like, okay, maybe I have to delete some, uh, maybe I have to delete a couple programs to make enough space for the game, right, or something like that, or maybe maybe like the biggest crisis that you have is like, how do I configure the game pad so that jump and fire are the correct button? Like back then, it was like. Well, wait a minute. Do I have a Gravis gamepad? Do I have a and your gamepad hooked into your sound card? Your gamepad hooked really? into your sound card. Yes, this is. Oh, I'm, not, really this I'm <laughs> not making this well, stuff like, up. I mean, I've watched some videos from like LGR before and stuff because he does a lot of computer things, but I've never heard of plugging it into the sound card. Folks, you you guys want to see like Dash V? I don't. I'm not ready to do it right now because I didn't know the show was going to go off in this direction, but. Next week, I can bring up some of the old gear from the uh, garage, and I can show you guys stuff? how we used to do it back in the day. I know, but so, oh, like, that would be a fun episode. episode. Oh, yeah, people thought I was the big boy on the block because I had a DX4 100 with eight mega RAM. I'm telling you, and and like the other thing too is like, <laughs> back, back in the day, right? Back in the day. If you wanted to play Duke Nukem 3D or Quake or something like that, like for me, because, you know, I, I had the DX4 100, but when I had that, you know, other people had already moved on to like Pentium and beyond, right? Like, so. The next level says, let's do it next week. <laughs> All right. Gee, so it is said, so it'll be done. I'll, I'll bring out the gamepad, show you the, the, the card. I can't guarantee I'll have a working system because it's some old. of this stuff is like 30 yeah. years old now. But wow, that seems weird to say. But, um, but yeah, it, it was it was definitely a chore. And like nowadays, generally speaking, unless you want to overclock or something, and even then, you've got like applications in Windows where like you can double click some app, it opens up. You you move a slider, you press some settings, and it updates your BIOS for you. Like when I started, there was no mouse driven BIOS. There was no Windows program to like manipulate the BIOS, right? Like. You 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 hit either delete or F one or F eight or whatever like a friggin' madman. If you didn't know what it was, you just <laughs> alternated between them until like some blue screen came up. And blue screen wasn't bad. Blue screen was your actual bio screen. And then you're tricking out shit that like you have no clue what this does. You're like block mode addressing. Okay, well blocks would imply chunks of stuff. Chunks of stuff have to move faster than individual stuff. So yeah, block mode addressing, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> right? Memory I don't know what's going on, but I'll figure it out. Memory hole. I don't know what a memory hole is, but in general, like I know like holes in the road are bad because you can fall into them. So like I don't want a hole in my computer, right? Like, no, I don't want the memory hole, right? And like <laughs> your computer's all crushed. Yeah, you do all this stuff and like it, it really, really it was like trial and error. Like I I kept this notepad because like uh Jeremy said, there wasn't like the internet. Like if you were lucky, you had a BBS, like a bulletin board system, and you'd go in and dial up and like chat with maybe <laughs> you and the chat was you and like the CD shady guy that ran the BBS system, right? Like you didn't know who the hell this guy was, why he left a phone line open and let people randomly log into his computer. So, but you just were like, I don't care. I can get a free copy of Doom. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the days. And then you find out it's shareware anyway. So you could have like just gotten it at like a computer show or whatever. But, right. uh, but all, yeah, all nine so, floppy disk. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then later AOL came out and all this other stuff. And but but yeah. So that that was the original. Speaking games. of AOL. Aim, uh, AOL gets the messages get shut down finally after all these years. Oh man, in December, right? Yeah, I was like, oh, dude, I'm sad, dude. Yeah, you know what? Like, I, I was sad, but like, I, and I don't know, this is weird. Like, so I haven't used AOL Instant Messenger. Anybody in the chat has anybody used AOL Instant Messenger in the last 10 years? I have not used it 15 years, probably. I don't think I've used it. I'm with you, Jeremy. I don't think I've used it in 15 plus years, but ironically, like, news that they're going to shut it down make me go, like, I want to go download it again and go mess it I should down. download it again and load it up. Like, I thought that was already shut down. I wonder if there's people, like, sitting there seeing me as a way going, like, he'll come back. He said, <laughs> he said BRB. He'll be back. He's going to be back after dinner. <laughs> 13 years. There, they're like, he said BRB. Yeah. I want to download it again just to see if he was on there. Yeah, G the Next Level says he also thought it died years ago. 
So, Kyle, what were your thoughts? Oh, well, I, I kind of skipped over the whole AOL Messenger thing. That I, <laughs> no I never really got exposed to that. I think my first thing was, like, MySpace, really, was kind of my first experience with most of that. So, yeah. Hey, Lister's mate says, what's up? Lister, I'll tell you what's up. AIM until December. Boom. Still got it. All right. Catch us on AIM. Let's focus on our great show, Pickups. I heard you guys got some Pickups this week. Oh, Kyle, yeah, I heard you got some pickups you've been sitting on for a while. Uh, got yeah. on okay. You, you really want to ask because it's, it's a lot. I really uh, <laughs> well, We can alternate. Show so, a couple of pickups and then we'll go back and forth. Yeah, so I'm not going to go over all these in detail. Um, but I kind of started picking up some Wii games. Uh, and I know there's like supposed to be a lot of shovelware stuff, but I never got a Wii. I just got a Wii U because... Since I can play Wii games, you can basically just upscale stuff. I was going to get a Wii, but I couldn't really get the one that I wanted. So I was like, eh, I guess I'll just pay the extra. I was actually wanting a Switch at the time, but there are none available. So I said, eh. Yeah, I see you there, Jeremy. You got yours pulled up. <laughs> but um, I just kind of been buying some Wii games. I mean, they're like dirt cheap and stuff. And sometimes yeah. it's like a dollar to try a game. You know, why not and stuff. Uh but honestly, I was surprised. Uh, I got it for the 3DS, and then I got it for the Wii. I tried it on both. I didn't really play it, and I came back to it again for vacation. Uh, and that was Monster Hunter Try. Uh, and I mean, I got that for like five bucks. And I mean, that's a, a heck of a game, especially for the Wii, for like five dollars. Um, if for some reason you haven't heard of Monster Hunter, it's kind of like an RPG sort of thing. Um, it's it's hard to explain because really, it's it's kind of become its own thing um you basically make a hunter and you can use weapons but you're not stuck with a class so you can change your weapon at any time um and basically you go out you can like gather ingredients to combine stuff to make like potions and all that that you use on these hunts you go out and like hunt monsters you uh and basically the big mechanic is you're able to like skin them or harvest them take the parts and then make new weapons with it so it's just kind of this big circular um gameplay experience of like going out hunting stuff getting loot and making that into new equipment so um yeah it's it's really cool especially like for five bucks if you see it and you haven't tried one um i know the graphics are like Wii graphics but it's still good and it's just got a little bit of its own sense of humor um i really like the guild sweetheart and stuff in it she's really funny so it's one of those things you know find it for five bucks you can pick that up uh but mostly 3ds games now for that series yeah. and folks um, don't forget if you have a wii u the wii u will play original wii games so yeah. Yeah. and that's what i've been doing yeah and i'm not yeah. sure exactly like how much it upscales them and stuff but since it has hdmi and everything it's just so much more convenient really um but yeah just kind of like pick that up red still um super swing golf which is known as like ponyo golf has kind of been interesting so really just a lot of stuff that's like really cheap and you know enough fun for the money so kind of just picking up some wii games every once in a while if i see something good so if you guys have any recommendations uh really i'd love to hear those so i can pick up some good cheap stuff so feel free to leave those in the comments or the chat nice ace combat. i'll i'll leave that there i'll let you guys do some is ace combat actually on the wii no <sighs> oh, jeremy <laughs> don't trick me like that I'm breaking my heart over here so most of mine, most of my pickups are all the same thing. So it seems like I got, I got a bunch of stuff. Oh, box. Box. Oh, I got gosh. a bunch. Of, I got a bunch of stuff in from Limited Run Games. So, um, and they all kind yeah, of. Come by FedEx or? Uh, I think it came via uh, the 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 mail That's service, true. the regular mail service. So, um, so I got Night Trap. Ooh. So it came with these nice collector cards from Limited Run. Oh. <laughs> um, Let's say, this, wow, what the hell are you collecting? This is the Night Trap PS4. Um, this is the limited edition. Um, and so this one actually has, uh, let me see, what has it got in here? It's got a Night Trap video game, a Night Trap cassette tape, which has the Night Trap, um, the Night Trap uh, song. Um, and it has one scat, pa uh, scat patch. So for the Sega Control Attack Team, or the Special Control Attack Team, if you're not playing it on a Sega console. Um, still in the shrink wrap, as you noticed. At some point, maybe I'll open it. I'm not going to open it here on the show, I don't think. 
Um, maybe. Also says open it if you are a true gamer. I agree with you. I, I I agree, but here's here's the deal. Here's the deal. So I, I have a digital copy of this already. Um, and the digital copy, there's been a lot of patches and updates uh, to this game. So um, there's really no benefit to me opening this up and taking the physical copy out, unless I want to listen to the cassette, but I already have the MP3 for that even, so it's just kind of nice to have. Um, but I really like this because I never, I have Night Trap for the 3DO, um, but the case that I have for it is not an original case. I was never able to find it in the case. So the I don't have the original manual or anything like that. So, but I do have the 3DO, but it's a it's a homemade case. So, uh, which brings me to the next part of the pickups. So, because what's already what's always bummed me out is I really love the 3DO case. Um, this the the colors are all washed out and everything. This doesn't do justice to the real 3DO case. But I, I like the whole the pose, the overlay with the graphics, the way they do it, like kind of like a film strip. I, I really like this version of it um and what's interesting is so i got these separate because i did them on separate orders i wanted to make sure i got the playstation limited edition first because i knew that one was going to sell out quick so i got that put it in my cart and ordered that and then immediately went back in and ordered the rest of the stuff i wanted so uh that came later um so i got the night trap 25 years later uh documentary uh, what's really cool is if you buy either the digital version or the physical version of the PS4 one, it does come with a documentary, but it's only half the documentary. It's a shorter version on the game. Uh, this is the full, uh, I, I can't say uncut because I don't think they still used all everything, but um, this has a lot more footage, a lot more uh, interview time and stuff uh, with um, James Riley and, and other folks. Um, really, what's really awesome is that uh a lot of the cast is actually you know part of the interview i think uh william jones uh is in there uh also um you know I, they also have uh who else was on here so they don't actually say like who it is but anyway they they have a bunch of the folks from here in there um so another thing uh that i got with that i'll save that one for next um, I'll save that one for next because that kind of gives it away. <laughs> uh, uh, so it comes with another card of Night Trap, which is kind of neat. So, and then this is the actual, this is the PC version. So these, these were not guys, so I could show you for scale, right? So I can show you <laughs> for scale. Yeah. So this is the size of like a Blu-ray, which is the size of like a, a PlayStation 4 game, right? This is the size of the PC version box. This is just like the old school big box PC. I miss the same too. I miss, yeah. I mean, this is a weighty box. Like, you feel like you're getting something more than empty space. I mean, the illusion is very strong. Um, now, does the game uh, come on floppy disk in there? <laughs> no, the game, uh, floppy disk? the game doesn't come on floppy disk. Uh, let me see if this says what it does has. Does it come on laser disk? Uh, this doesn't Ooh, list that'd be contents. Nice. This doesn't list the contents, but I think the contents of this are, I think there's a poster in here. I'm not 100% sure, but um, again, I didn't uh, open uh, it. A young lady in the chat said, uh, Dash P, you're so cute. You should totally open that uh, night trap stuff. I'm looking in the chat. That, that, that does not exist. You're making up stories. Right, um, so another game that I got that I'm kind of looking forward to, because this is a totally new thing to me. Um, and this is what I like sometimes about limited run. Sometimes through limited run, I learn about really interesting games that I wouldn't have otherwise heard about. Uh, there's another full motion game for the PlayStation 4 called The Bunker. Whoa. And uh, I'll read the description here. It says, uh, live action psychological horror video game. As the last remaining survivor in a nuclear bunker, John's daily routine is the one thing that keeps him sane. But when an alarm goes off, his mind starts to self-destruct. Venture into long forgotten areas recover repressed childhood memories, and unlock the dark secrets of the bunker. So I'm really, um, really looking forward to, because this is a, yeah, and what's really awesome, you can't really tell, you know, through the camera and everything, but um, this is a new FMV game. So what's nice about Night Trap is Night Trap is like a restored FMV game. So um, the quality is way better than what we ever saw in Sega CD. 
uh, or or 32x or even 3DO. Uh, but still, it, it's the video that you're looking at is like VHS quality at best, right? Um, so this is actually shot with you know more current gen uh, camera technologies, more current gen editing, and all that other stuff. So um, you know the 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 visual fidelity on this is definitely more on par with modern sim cinema. So I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, and playing this game because I I know literally nothing about it. Um, cover then, card reminds me of Silent Hill PT trailer thing you released before you announced that game. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does, and then you got some cards going on for it. <laughs> they love the cards. They love they love the cards. It's like I'm back to like baseball cards. Like, oh, this will be worth money someday. Yeah. Right, I, mean, right. I got a bunch of useless baseball cards in my closet. I got, I got so many friggin' useless baseball cards. <laughs> like, we'll we'll trade useless baseball cards for video games. But so those are John's card. Those are those pickups. Um, well, definitely let us know about uh, how you like the bunker because that does sound really interesting. You should yeah. watch it off your PlayStation because you can do that. I absolutely. I, I'll do some. Uh, I'll do a live stream off the PlayStation when I go to play it. Um, Let me know I what do, you want. I'll go turn you the chat room and talk. <laughs> I do have a couple other pickups, but um, I, I don't know if you've got other stuff that you want to show first, uh, Kyle. Um. Well, Jeremy, did you have anything before I go again? No. No. Oh, okay. N nothing other than his undying love for you, Kyle. Oh, Jeremy, I didn't know you felt that way about me. I tell you every day, I was talking about. <laughs> Just kidding. I knew you felt that way. Yeah, G to the next level says he misses the LRG stickers. He thought those were way cooler. Okay. Well, so just a couple things here. Um, kind of, you know, I'll save one of those for later. So I did pick up Dragon Age Inquisition for PC for like a dollar. Good game, by the way. <laughs> GameStop. Uh, I don't know if it's just because the PC games don't really sell in there or anything, but every once in a while, they put stuff on super, super, super clearance. And so I'll take that for a dollar. Um, I don't know <laughs> if I'll ever play it, but I'll keep it for my uh, PC that I have. It's not like Skyrim, but bigger, it seems like to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've heard it's good. I've just, I, like, I had the first game, and I kind of started trying to play it, but I, think I don't I know. I PS4, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lister's yeah. mate has also recognized that you're not showing off the pizza sheets. Lister, you might have missed it if you joined the show a little bit late. Um, but the, they uh, had rats, so they had to shut it down. The, the health department <laughs> found some unsanitary conditions in the, 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 the pizza parlor bedroom is currently under renovations. Apparently you're sleeping on the preparation table, it's not okay. Hey, there's an idea for Halloween. Maybe if you guys tune in, we'll uh, dress up for Halloween and be the pizza <laughs> chef. It's and all about Tuesday too, so we can really do things special. Oh, <laughs> <Ooh>, hey! <laughs> but um, I, I don't, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, don't, don't go expecting things, folks. Don't go expecting things. <laughs> but uh, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> other than the special after show, uh, besides that, I did pick up uh, Axiom Verge too for like five bucks again. GameStop like. Just had a, a ton of these, uh, what was it, the Game Trust thing where they kind of started doing like physical copies of some of those games. They had a bunch of them for sale, so they were like $5. Um, again, I don't know if I'll ever get around to playing it, but I've heard it's good. I think maybe Chris or Jeremy, you had mentioned wanting to play that. I thought it was I haven't played Axiom somebody. Verge before. I've heard it's I've good. Heard of it. <laughs> heard yeah, of it. I guess it's supposed to be like Metroidvania style or something. Um so I don't know. It Tyler. it looks, yeah. Oh yeah, I think it was Tyler um, who had mentioned that. But it looked interesting. So I guess if you're interested in those kinds of games, that might be one to look into. Uh, especially get a physical edition for five bucks. I don't know if it has a CD, but it does have a case. So that looks nice. Um, and then I just picked up some game guides. I actually never really buy these or anything, but um, I picked up uh, Dead or Alive Dimensions for the 3DS. So I just wanted to get a couple uh, fighting ones. I just got. Five and uh, Street Fighter or Super Street Fighter Four, just yeah. some stuff to kind of look at for those. But I know uh, she Chris, said you mentioned Halloween. Bubsy's coming out on Halloween. Yeah, Bubsy's coming out on Halloween. I did not know oh. that. Jesus, so thanks for the heads up on that. So, what could possibly go wrong? Mm, yeah, we'll see. 
<laughs> Hello? Hello? If you played Bubsy, you know what I just did there. <laughs> Otherwise, you're like, what's yeah, well. wrong with the NFC? <laughs> <laughs> he just gets hey, so excited yeah. talking about his pickups. Hey, man, Bubsy, that was back when games had personality. You're not wrong. Chris. And every single one of my jokes has just fallen flat. You guys, like, yeah, yeah. No, listeners, mate, I have not yet played SteamWorld Dig, but I can't wait. It's definitely in the backlog, back catalog. So, And that's um, actually uh, free on Origin right now, if oh, you want really? to download Origin. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have Origin, I actually. I have Origin um, because yes. like, a year ago, Command & Conquer was also free. So now I'll have Command oh, & Conquer yeah, yeah. and SteamWorld Dig. <laughs> I, I was just uh, playing one of the... Uh, Command and Conquer games today and stuff, and actually, uh, StarCraft, the first one's free too. Uh, really? So you can get that. Yeah, I just picked uh, it up. Uh, but yeah, actually, and uh, we the folks the has performance of the stream may this. suffer. Oh, is I'm your internet gonna... connection going down a little bit? No, I'm actually gonna go on to Origin right now and download these. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. my internet can handle that. My internet's like, oh, hell no. I'll, I'll get StarCraft after show though. All right. But yeah, um, it's it's free on Origin right now, and then for the Wii U, I think you can get the Steamroll or whatever that like one and two. You can also mm -hmm. buy those on disc as well. So, oh nice. So that's that's pretty much my stuff, Chris. If you had anything else, yeah. So a couple things. So on the non, so I'll, I'll kind of transition. So the, these are not games, but they're gaming related. Uh, you guys know I'm a sucker for uh, sci-fi time travel stories, uh, and I love video games when you can meld. The two and not screw it up uh, i'm yours forever uh quantum break zero state is a novelization of the game uh there's also some additional stuff in here additional lore and world building that's not in the game so um i picked this up off of uh amazon can't wait to give it a to give it a read i know it's going to be most some of the biggest criticism of it was that um it follows the game super closely so about like 90 percent of it is you've already seen in the game but I kind of like that because, um, you know, I, I part of the reason that I do get guides, I'm like you, Kyle, for a while I didn't get guides at all. And then there's so many games that I've played that if I do decide to play it again, I don't want to have to, like, you know, hunt for 18 hours to find the special weapon or remember how to do some certain thing. Uh, in other cases, maybe just flipping through, looking at some nice pictures, right, and, and reading some text about to get the gist of the story again will be enough to scratch the itch. Uh, so I'm looking forward to a nice light read that'd be a quick read because I already know the characters, I know the environment, and then maybe I just get a couple of uh, additional surprises and additional pieces of different characters or events that weren't in the game. So I picked up that. Um, along those same lines, um, I got the book, Alan Wake. <laughs> uh, so another another thing I really loved, uh, you know, this one doesn't deal with time travel, uh, but it is like a psychological, you know, horror type game. Um, I'm not going to go on and on about how much I love the game, but, uh, looking forward to reading the book version of it. So, um, do you have any time to read a book? What's that? <laughs> do you, well, between gaming and work and family, do you have any time to read a book? So here's the problem, right? If I do read a book, it's gotta be a quick read. And so mm, yeah. what's, what's really difficult for me is, is, um, you know, when you pick up the book, like maybe I'll get like halfway through and then... You know, it might be three weeks, four weeks before I can actually pick the game back up or pick the book back up. And the worst part about a book is when you pick it up, there's no previously on Alan Wake, right? Like, <laughs> there's no, like, if, if you just opened it up and it was, like, previously and it told you, like, everything that happened before. I mean, Amazon, if you're watching, that'd be a great feature for the Kindle, right? Like, previously in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, right? Veruca Salt gets her due, you know, all this other stuff. But... Something like that would be cool, but so in this case, since I've already played through those games and I've already beaten those games, um, you know, I should be able to jump into and out of the book, hopefully, and not have it be so jarring, because it, it feels like a lot of times when I read a, a, another book that's totally new stuff, I'm trying to figure out the, the, the characters and keep everybody straight, and then, like, I jump to something else, and then I come back, and I'm like, I, I'll have to start all over again, not worth it. So... So yeah, uh, well, is that it? So that I do, it? I do have two other things, but do you have some stuff, Kyle? Ah, uh, no, that's pretty much all my stuff. <laughs> so the last two things, and these are not gaming related at all, 
Um, but they're kind of on that. We talked a bit about digital versus physical with some of the games and everything. Um, I am super proud and super excited to say I picked up this boy, this girl actually, on uh, 4K Ultra HD. Right? I was gonna say this bad boy, but it's a she's a good girl. So uh, <laughs> out of my dream, she is it. I don't, I don't want to de I don't want to defeminize her. Um, this was an excellent movie. Like anybody that hasn't seen this, um, like this is everything that I kind of hoped uh, Superman would have been. And more. Um, I, this this is a really great, um, you know, great movie. The director she did a fantastic job with it. Uh, the actress did a fantastic job. Um, this is awesome. So as you can see, I got it in 4K Ultra HD HDR. I'm looking forward to playing this in its full glory on the Xbox One X when it arrives on November 7th. Um, in the meantime, I got the digital code that I redeemed that allows me to watch it in 4K on voodoo which is pretty awesome so um yeah flip side is something that i was super excited about and then i ended up majorly pissed off on so hopefully spielberg and uh and universal uh hopefully you watch this show because you certainly don't watch your facebook channel uh your, your facebook page or your twitter feed um i picked this up at best buy et the extraterrestrial in 4k ultra hd blu-ray and digital hd um, okay, you know what? You got me. Digital HD, not digital 4K or digital UHD. So um, the digital version, two issues that I have with it. One of them is the digital version is only 1080p. They don't have a 4K version of ET on any of the digital stores at all. It's not on Fandango. It's not on uh, um, uh, Voodoo in 4K. Uh, even worse, there is a digital copy a 1080p digital copy on voodoo but this code isn't good for voodoo this code is only good for fandango Ugh. so what the literal hell like, i know i uh, i hate when you have to go to those video services to get a digital copy and there's no there's nothing on here that says that it's not on voodoo right so basically i buy it i open it i get the code and then I find out, like, the service provider that I picked, they don't support. Now, yes, technically, right, if any of you follow Ultraviolet and everything, technically I can purchase it through Fandango, and then I can, in theory, watch it in Voodoo. But here's the problem, and I've already verified this. I've got about 90 movies in my Voodoo library that are all purchased through Ultraviolet, right? Because I buy the physical editions, right, that come with, that come with digital copies. Um, and then I register them all with Voodoo. None of my Disney movies that I have ultraviolet licenses for through Voodoo will play in Fandango, even though Fandango has Disney movies for purchase in their store. So somehow I can, like all my non-Disney movies, I can see in Fandango from Voodoo because the ultraviolet carries over. I just link my ultraviolet to Fandango the same way I've linked it to Voodoo. And most of my library transfers over, except for some reason, the Disney stuff. I'd have to repurchase the digital Disney stuff, which makes no sense to me whatsoever. Yeah, it makes sense because you want more money, so you got to buy both. I don't know if it's that, or I don't know if it's Fandango like or not. Is, like, uh, I, I don't know. Like, and, and as a customer, I don't really care what the issue is. Like, I just want my stuff to work because the other issue that I have is uh, another movie, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I noticed in Voodoo, I can watch it in the the full blown 4K that I that I got and paid for. In uh, Fandango, I can only play it in standard definition, even though they have it in four or they don't have it in 4K. They have it in 1080p in standard def, but I can only watch it in standard def, even though I own the license for the 4K. So, as a customer, I don't really care what's going on behind the scenes. This is why, like, as an old guy, like, look. This darn thing, where is it? I threw it over here. This part right here where it says 4K Ultra HD, as long as I put the disc in a 4K Ultra HD player, it's 4K Ultra HD. It's not 4K Ultra HD on this player and then like some crappy substandard thing on this player. Like if it's a 4K Blu-ray player, I get to see it in 4K. Why is it if I'm on a digital service provider, I have a 4K license to the movie, they have a 4K copy or a 1080p copy, 
but I have to watch it at 640 by 480. That's complete bullshit. <laughs> so that's my rant for today. Like, I, it Tell just, us how you really feel today, Dash. It makes me upset, right? Because this was a $30 movie. <laughs> <laughs> this was thir- now granted right like so it came with this nice book right and it's got some really nice you know artwork and pictures and things like that so it's it's you know the i do have a it came with a sound the et soundtrack which is amazing if nobody's ever heard the soundtrack um worth setting up your uh your sound blaster 16 on your dos computer so that you can pop this into your 2x cd rom and listen to it um it does have oh, make you feel better, Chris. it does have blu-ray as well as uh the 4k blu-ray so it's got that going for it but but pissed off pissed off that the that the digital hd copy was not doesn't support voodoo and i don't care what the reason is but uh, and i'm i'm nervous like okay technically right like in theory i should be able to buy it on fandango and the ultraviolet license should allow me to watch it on voodoo but is that is that actually going to work or am i going to find out i can only watch it in standard def on on voodoo because that'll just make me from pissed to livid why don't make you feel better copy down come over and play some ec on my sorry <laughs> yeah that'll definitely call me down <laughs> listers mate says wait a minute you're not going to rip that cd with winamp <laughs> Win amp. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, because so, I'd gotten a couple of those DVDs and I didn't realize you had to use the ultraviolet service or whatever. And I was like, dang it. Like, I thought it was like a native digital copy. So stop doing that. Yeah, I don't. So I don't mind Voodoo because Voodoo so far, it's been available on like just about every device. I can watch it on my tablet. I can watch it on my phone. They allow you to download in case you want to watch something offline. So if you know you're going to like go on a plane trip or whatever, I can say, oh, download Terminator Genesis, which is a fantastically underrated movie. Um, but you can download it and then you can watch it offline. Um, so it also works on you know your PC. It works on your, your Roku box. Uh, all that kind of stuff. It's even now it's on Apple TV uh, and a couple other outlets. So it's it's a really nice, convenient way. If you buy your your stuff at Walmart, like you know the big bin, oh oh DVD, yeah. or DVDs, A lot of people don't know it, but there's an app you can get on your phone called uh, it's it's just the Walmart app. Um, and there's a thing in there called Savings Catcher. You click it, you scan your receipt, the barcode on there. If it detects that you bought a movie from Walmart and they have a they have a, 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 a digital copy of that in Vudu, they automatically add the digital copy to your Vudu collection. Hmm. So, which is amazing because like sometimes you go to some of these digital marketplaces and I don't know what they're thinking. It's like, okay, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Yeah, I wouldn't mind watching it in 1080p, but I'm not going to pay nineteen dollars to watch it on 1080p. Like, are you yeah. are you ridiculous? <laughs> Or I can go just go to Walmart and buy it for seven dollars out of like the miscellaneous bin, scan the receipt, and I got the 1080p copy, <laughs> and I have it in physical and digital. So that's how I've been doing it. I just every every month or so I'll go to Walmart, rifle through the Blu-ray bin, find a couple things, buy them, scan the receipt, and then you know I've got the physical copy in Blu-ray. And then I've got the digital copy in Vudu. And then because I like the convenience of digital, I want to like digital. But I just don't like how like it doesn't make yeah. sense to me. I feel like okay, I have to put my Disney movies over on this shelf and lock them with one key, and then I have to take all my other movies and put them in this shelf and lock them with a totally different key. And then depending on the day of the week, I can or can't have access to the key to unlock those from the cabinet and play them. And then I have to play them in just the right player. Like I'm being very metaphorical in my physical imagery here, but. Like, that's really what it feels like. You would never do that with physical media, right? Like, it's, it's totally ridiculous. So why are they doing that to us with digital media? Because here's the reality, right? All you guys that think that you're being clever, the pirates don't have to worry about any of that stuff. They just take their ripped copy and they play it however the hell they want, wherever the hell they want. And that's why you don't get their money. So I want to be honest. Help me be honest. If you remove hassle, you have business. Wise words from Dashvi. 
<laughs> I ripped that off from some book. I don't remember the book, so I didn't make that one up. But yeah, it's actually a principle. Like if you remove hassle, you have business. Yeah. So we have a couple of news articles. Uh, the first one is the evil within is having a charity drive for um, so I just, uh, this is support the Red Cross and the right trying to raise fifteen thousand dollars and the Desa will match every dollar to help raise that money. Oh my goodness! First of all, have any of you guys seen the trailer for the Evil Within? No, that was one of those games I skipped over. So <laughs> look up the trailer, folks. I'll put a link down in the doodly do. Um, the trailer is really, really cool. Like I was, I was standing in a GameStop, like waiting online, and they had this trailer in a loop. So this trailer played like three times in repetition. But the music and the imagery and the graphics and the trailer, um, I was like, never heard of this game, but holy shit! Like I, I want to buy it. Like I want to, I want to like day one have this game, um, kind of deal. So, uh, yeah. So Must definitely check it out. Impression. Yeah, definitely now, check it out. Somehow we missed this, but um, Assassin's Creed Origin has an eight hundred, yes, eight zero zero dollar uh, legendary edition. Now, come on, are you trolling me? No, I'm dead serious. I'm surprised we missed this. This, this is a real thing. You sent yes. me the link, and I'm like, I'm not gonna. I, I was looking to see if it was like from the Onion or whatever. An eight hundred dollar no, edition of Assassin's Creed. Hey, okay. it comes with a season pass. Yeah. Dude, uh, only, huh? like, for 800 bucks, it better come with a block <laughs> of cocaine. There's only, only 200 are available in, United, uh, in North America. Well, I think, and I think they already sold, sold all of them. Yeah, they this sold is all the art sold. Like, Quick, this yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah. yeah, Dawn of the Creed that. Legendary Edition. Let me see. There are seven versions of Assassin's Creed Origins up for pre-order. Now, see, they must be trying to compete with Batman. <laughs> Right, that Batman game that came out on Xbox One and PlayStation Four, uh, that had like a dozen different editions. It was impossible to buy like a complete edition of the game. Um, <laughs> let, me, let me see. So here, do they say the right, in the, the highest bad. end? Bullshit too. They have a twenty-eight point seven inch figurine of Bayek and his eagle Senu. Yeah, that's cast, the assassin. Cast in resin, right? Uh, a hand-drawn world map of Assassin's Creed Origins Egypt. A replica of Bayek's eagle skull amulet cast in resin. Four 15-inch by 11-inch lithographs signed by Ubisoft Montreal studio artists. Official game soundtrack. Two steel book cases. Art book and cards. Numbered certificate of authenticity. A copy of Assassin's Creed Origin Season Pass and all other digital book digital goods. Folks. That's not that $80. That's like $100. That is, that is not enough. <laughs> That is not enough. I, I think I got just as much stuff with the Tomb Raider edition, and that was like 150 bucks. Like, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. Like, like uh, I want to pay 800 for any special copy. edition. For, for 800 bucks, right, it better come with an Xbox One X and a PlayStation 4 Pro. Mm. Yeah, I would pay that kind of for us. Uh, he's come by game. Like That's time. literally That's the money. Weird. Like, like uh, okay, if you're a collector and you got the money to spend... Props. You know, I'm totally, I completely, that's okay. I'm not going to criticize you. But, like, for the average person, right, like, imagine, imagine this, right? You could almost have an iPhone X for the same cost. <laughs> or you could, no kidding, have an Xbox One X and PlayStation 4 Pro. Both. Or a lot of used games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or a ton of used games, right? Like you, you could even you could even get yourself a copy of Little Samson with money left over. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm if just, you really want to, I'm just I'm just saying I'm just saying. Yeah, G to the next level says yikes. No, no crap, yikes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, there's a good question. What would it take for you to buy a eight hundred dollars special edition game? Let us know. Yeah. Would it take yeah. it It had to be Ace Combat, and it had to be amazing. Even so, did, I still want to buy it. So what, what What? would it take, what would it take, Jeremy, to get you to spend 800 bucks on a... Yeah, I know. Ace Combat 7, a flight controller, uh, HD collection, a bunch of figurines. God, I can't just pay $800 on like, a game. And, Man, uh, and a real fighter pilot helmet. 
Yeah, he had to get like a legit a VR helmet I could put it on and play. And that's the only way I'll pay the dollars on Ace Combat. <laughs> Jeremy's like, if I could sit on the lap of the developers. Actually, I'd pay while I play. <laughs> I'll be fine. I'll, I'll play Ace Combat too. All right, all right, Kyle. What what about you? Like, what what game, what game? and what kind of extras would they have to throw in? I don't think I would ever spend that kind of money. Like, uh, I think the console was a good idea because at least you'd be like, oh. There's, you know, console. a console for it. Um, art books are nice. I really like, like, a full, complete CD soundtrack, not these half CD soundtracks that leave out the best songs. It'd have to be full soundtrack. Right, Probably right. on, like, 50 vinyls, um, a few of the the big laser disc, a movie. You need to have, like, a whole movie series on laser disc coming with it. Um, what else do you need? Some decals, I guess, for my new console that makes it look super cool. Maybe a pro controller? I don't know. But I wouldn't. No, nah. eight hundred. No, I gotta. I gotta say, no. I'm. I'm with you, Kyle. Like, I. I would need for eight hundred bucks. It would have to be like, okay, if if it eight hundred bucks meant the game with all the all the content, right? Um, plus a PS4 Pro, plus the PSVR. Like, if you're gonna bundle all <laughs> that stuff in, like, and I'm not talking just the PSVR. I mean, the PSVR with the move controllers and the camera, the whole kit and caboodle, right? And not, and not the last gen like early adopter, ha ha. Uh, you know, PlayStation like you know VR. I'm talking like the new one that they just released. You know, like that's that's what I'm talking. Like, I can't justify it, no matter what game it is. Almost. No, I mean at yeah. least you know. At least if it was At like least... a Fire Emblem game or something, I'd be like, "Hey, that's a good game." But uh... yeah, I mean, if they, if they, the reason why I'm saying like, so if I'm gonna get a console and I'm gonna get the most expensive peripheral for the console, complete, plus have a game to play it, you know, I'll be okay with that. But I'd be yeah, I'd be fine with that. No, I'd be fine with that. But eight hundred bucks for like a game with like a statue and some cards and some like. The sad part is, you know, it's sold out. I'll, I'll scalp oh, oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, sell absolutely. It. You know, it would be I'm hilarious if the yet. official game soundtrack started off with like track one. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say that in comments. It's not too shit. Instead of laughing at you. You just see a title on the back. Message from the developers. <laughs> They're just laughing their asses off at you. I can't believe he bought this for eight hundred dollars. Track what one. An idiot. Yeah. Track one. Voice actors. I agree. Yeah. I want dinner with the guys too, the developers and the voice actors. Now, see, actually, that would be cool if they were like, you know, limited editions, and we'll actually have like voice actors send you personalized message on your music CD or something. I don't know, yeah, something, yeah. you know, something like that would be cool, I guess. But eight hundred dollars, yeah, right, man. If I was rich, I still would do it. Just for so, personal. like, so, like, so the soundtrack, folks, and this may or may not be satire. here. The soundtrack includes <laughs> such, such gems as Burn Baby Burn, Disco Inferno, uh, Money, Money, Money. <laughs> Man. I don't trust you on that, okay? All right. a yeah, and, you, and you only get those two. That's it. Yep. Take that money, watch it burn. Drown in it's the river. Push push production to two million a month. So Kyle, eventually you might be able to get one. The Switch? Do what? The Switch and uh, production. Uh, yeah, they're crazy productions. Two million a month. So you might have a yeah. chance next month. Hey, GameStops have the Switch now, but now I don't want to spend three hundred dollars on one. So it's funny, every time I go to GameStop, they're there. Like, oh, I went for Kyle. I, I, I run it every time he does it. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm, I'm still taking like going into GameStop or Walmart or whatever to try to buy. Uh, you know, um, here's what's really weird and difficult for Nintendo, and and I think at some point they're gonna have to address this. I, I go into the the Nintendo section there, right? And so there's a whole there's a whole rack like at Walmart that like okay here's all Xbox One, another rack of here's all PlayStation Four. I get to like two full racks of like Nintendo stuff. Yeah. One full rack is like original Wii, Wii U, and 3DS games. The other rack is like more leftover Wii, Wii U, and 3DS games. And then there's like literally one shelf that's like the four switch games that you can get in physical oh don't forget the uh <laughs> ps2 grand theft auto collection that they always have five of in every store <laughs> that, is true. that is true that is true so i guess what i'm saying like nintendo needs to address at some point is 
well, and maybe they don't need to address it, and I just need to get with the times. But something that's really bugging me. Um, yes, there's a lot more third-party games and third-party top-tier games, like the Shantae games and all that other stuff. Um, you know, Thimbleweed Park. There's all these games coming out, you know, for the Switch that we didn't have the blessing of having, like, on the Wii U. But it's all it's all digital. Like, like 90% of the Switch library is digital only period end of story yeah. so i'm i'm hoping secretly um that you know that they're work that they're working secretly with with limited run or something behind the scenes to maybe see some of these actually get physical release um but I, i'm just really uh the, the old fella in me is just really you know, oh, yeah. I'll yeah i'm really nervous that my that my uh my switch 20 years from now is just going to be a brick right I'll be able to play some cut down version of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Mario Kart 8. <laughs> and every and everything else will just be like, you know, memory is corrupted or something like that, right? Like sorry, servers are no longer online. You cannot re-download this game. Like I don't and, think that happens. I really don't hope that it's happened. I don't think all it's right. And that you still can't you still can't I found this out the hard way. Um I'm I'm still finding new things that kind of annoy me about the Switch. We can't back up our games. What do you mean? Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, if you have PlayStation Plus, you can back all your stuff up to the cloud. Yeah, oh, you can do the same okay. thing with Xbox One. Okay. Yeah, but but on the Switch, no, your 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 oh, your oh, are that. tethered. If you drop your Switch, if you break your Switch, if you're if you decide to to you know trade in for another Switch a, a couple of years from now, maybe you wear yours out. Like so don't back up on a hard drive or something at least. Right like, now your saves sick. no, you can't move your saves to, to SD. You can't move your save you can't move uh, your saves. Really? Off really? Off a, a PS3 or PS4. How do you still yeah. have an Xbox 360? How do you still have that? So well they're they're claiming that it's because they don't they don't want they don't want to give an outlet to hackers, but newsflash Nintendo, like hackers have already broken into the system. They found golf there. <laughs> yeah. Right? Well like, I assume I mean, I mean, stopping. I would assume it's because they wouldn't want to pay for the server costs and all that of having to maintain servers for all the data. But well, I, I get, I get that part, and, and you, 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 you might be right about that. But why, why not let me save it to my SD card then? Yeah. If you're not allowed well, to do that, please back up to a hard drive or an SD card. I mean, it's, I guess, maybe you just chalk it up to um, really just kind of being another one of those backwards Nintendo things where they're not doing what everyone else is doing. For yeah. better or worse, and in this case, yeah. it's definitely worse. Oh yeah, and it's not. I love Nintendo, but it's just like this pisses me off. Oh, it, it totally it totally does. I I had I I had uh, my one of my old uh, Nintendo Wii's died, and um, what was amazing though was that I had an SD card with all my saves yeah. on it, and so when I restored right when I got my Wii U and all that other stuff, I was able to actually you know load up my saves and all that other stuff. Um, not to mention, I can also back up all the content from the digital store. So when the digital store eventually goes away in 2019, I think you're saying, right? Um, Wait, 2019? 2019, the Wii shop. I, oh, I, don't I don't think I don't the know. I don't think the Wii U. I think it's the Wii original shop. I did that for all of it. I was like, geez, like switches gave out. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, yeah. So the the um, yeah. So I I don't know what the heck. Like, what Nintendo? Why don't you want my money? I hate to say this, but I hope the hackers already downloaded all those. Oh, they're already working on it. The hackers are already working on it. Updates, so we can just download later. Yeah, the hackers are already working on it. So the hackers, the hackers are. You know what? In fact, while the hackers are waiting for their exploits to compile, right, um, and all that other stuff, they're probably watching a completely (laughs) 4K digital rip of ET: The Extraterrestrial that they didn't have to pay for. So all those flavors. While while I'm sitting here with my thirty dollar non voodoo copy like a sucker. <laughs> all right, I need to wrap it up. All right, there was uh, a before that though. There's a couple other news items just super yes, quick. Uh, uh, SNES Classic got hacked to add more playable games. Shocker there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Apparently, there's also a, a hidden scan line feature that they didn't actually release to the general public. Why would you not release that? It's old school. Like you see the scan lines on the NES and stuff. You know, they, they, if they actually give you nifty filters, then next thing you know, uh, you're gonna want to export your save games, and it just gets oh. 
people, it's chaos. Stupid fans, they watch too much. Yeah. And, and peop- <laughs> then people want there to be plenty of them in stock, so when they tell their friend how great it is, they could just run to the store and pick one up. It's It'll be madness. Cats and dogs living together. Jeremy, what the hell is wrong with you? Oh, no. uh, also, uh, ARGS is having an update coming out, and there's more stuff coming out to the eShop this week, or ARGS did it technically. Yep, there's a, a new character coming out, and then the, a free update, right? Yes. So Nintendo also, I think you already mentioned this, Nintendo increased Switch production to 2 million? Yes. Uh, well, by the time I buy mine, they're all nice and available. <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, 18 games are coming to the Switch, all by eShop. Nice. Now, actually, I was wondering, uh, speaking of Switch, Chris, did you ever pick up the Rapids and Mario game? I have not. I, I think that one's going to be a Christmas buy. Okay, gotcha. So, I should want um, that game. It's like it's different, but I want it. I, I, you know, I'm a fan of. I know the rabbits get a lot of hate, but I, I like really watch the cartoon. World I Xbox really cartoon. enjoyed that. I've seen the cartoon. The cartoon is pretty funny. Uh, I like the um, I like the raving rabbits games on the original Wii. Those are pretty good party yeah, games. Yeah. So, um, you got to make sure to go through. On the first game, the only thing that sucks is you have to go through and actually beat the game to unlock everything that to then play uh-huh. it multiplayer. So that's kind of hokey. Um, but uh, as long as you've already done that, um, so some of the games coming out. Um, so the 18 games. Um, what's it? 18 games released for the Nintendo Switch. So yeah, um, Stardew Valley. Um, Axiom Axiom Verge is available on on there. Um, Volgar the Viking, Tumblestone, Ninja Showdown, Earth Atlantis, Metal Slug X. That's a pretty good one. Auction yes. Free, another good one. Oh, Mars Odyssey's coming out this month. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's I think I'm also gonna I'm gonna wait till Christmas for that one also. Hmm. I'll wait for reviews all because I feel about that game right now. I think it's gonna be great. Um, you know, I don't I don't have any hate for it or anything. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not like trying to avoid Nintendo or whatever, but I guess there's a couple things that kind of take the wind out of the sails for me. Uh, one of them is Nintendo's, Nintendo's stance on the live streaming. So like that kind of yeah. has kind of killed some of my energy for wanting to play these games because I kind of want to share the experience with you folks. But um, so it's going to be more of a solo experience kind of deal. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward. I tell you what game I'm looking forward to. Um, on the eShop, and I hope gets a physical release, is Golf Story. I don't know if you guys have heard about that game. No. So Golf, Golf Story is kind of like um, it's a it's kind of like a JRPG meets you know meets uh you know simple you know kind of golf game. So you're a a golfer that's trying to like go to the golf championships and all this other stuff, and you visit different villages, and the different villages have different courses, and over time you level up, so you get better clubs and better abilities. Um, and you know, as you kind of go through, uh, but it's got like the kind of overhead Final Fantasy, original Final Fantasy game type, you know, type motif to it. So, uh, that looks like just a really charming game, um, and an original game. Like, it, I've never seen a, a, a casual golf RPG before, so I, I kind of like different things like that. Um, kind of something outside of the box, cool, yeah. So. <laughs> well, did we, <laughs> did we have reading, any other? I'm reading G's oh, wow. comment. He's saying for Nintendo, you could just do like me and go live on Twitch, then put it on YouTube later. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Flip it upside down and reverse it, and a few filters, and you might not get copyright strike. Right, right. <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like, I don't know. I, I, if Nintendo wants to punish me for being a fan. Um, you know, that's another back to what you said, Kyle, right? Like Sony and Xbox have made it trivial for me to share. Yeah. And watch you do it. So, yeah. So if Nintendo, you know, doesn't want, you know, if, if Nintendo thinks it doesn't need word of mouth to sell, uh, consoles and games, you know, let's, let's see how well that works out for them. It certainly worked wonders for the Wii U. Yeah. So we'll see. How long they can keep up some of those policies, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, mean, I don't know. So. I yeah. don't know. Well, hey, Nintendo, if it's any consolation, 
I don't think I don't think people are going to be talking about your stuff unauthorized on the AIM anymore. <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> wrap one. this up. Now if we could just get the whole internet shut down, Nintendo will be golden. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so folks, what do you what do you what do you think uh, about uh, digital movies and all that stuff? Uh, did you pick up a copy of uh, of Wonder Woman? Have you seen it? Not seen it? What do you think? Uh, were you able to score a copy of uh, Night Trap? Um, and how do you feel about books? You know, book versions of games and things like that. Are you into the the novels, the graphic novels, the coloring books? You know, the comic books. <laughs> That's that's my favorite. Hey, you know, I don't judge. I don't judge. Hey, they got those adult coloring books now, and like so many lines and stuff you have to color in. Absolutely. So, stuff. I do want to say thank you to the folks that have been in the chat. Uh, G Lister's mate, uh, Falzerko, um, or Fazerko. I didn't. I put an L in there. There's not even an L in there. Um, but uh, that was that was me auto correcting my speech by accident. I must be using Siri. Uh, to do it. Um, so folks, thanks again for the chat and for, for um, you know, following along with us. Uh, G actually has uh, on the Muse this week, um, he actually, last week, he did a, a good uh, video about what he hoped to see from an N64 Mini. Uh, so I definitely encourage you guys to check that video out and put a link down in the doodly-doo. Next week, actually, Jeremy and I plan to give our own kind of like response to uh, that video and, you know, what we think and some of our input and that kind of stuff. Plus, I'll also be uh, giving you my counter opinion to, um, you know, a couple episodes ago, Tyler gave some pretty high praise to Metroid uh, Samus Returns. I'm just about ready. I'm at the Queen Metroid. I've almost beaten the game. What are my thoughts on it? Do I agree with Tyler or do I have a slightly different take? You're going to have to tune in next week to find out. And Tyler may or may not continue to be my friend after that. <laughs> You might not be able to show you more if you do schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so, folks, if you want to hear my impressions on Metroid Samus Returns next week and also hear uh, Jeremy and I uh, shoot the breeze about uh, G's assessment and, and hopes and dreams for the N64 uh, Mini, plus our I'm own... I'm very critical about the N64, so I hope you did a little good job. <laughs> I've already seen the video. Jeremy has not, so... Well, about uh, to die this week, you know, and I watched it. <laughs> So, folks, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this episode, and we've given you some stuff to look forward to next week. Uh, feel free to tune in. We'll be here same bat time, same bat channel. Love like us or hate us. Share us. Absolutely. Love us or hate us. As long as you rate us. This has been Retro Reload. <laughs>